What's going on everybody and welcome back to JDD TV. I'm your host Josh and we are back for another episode of our Canadian Men's National Team Abroad update for you guys. This update will be from January 3rd to January 10th and there's a lot of interesting storylines, some transfers in there but it is a bit of a hard time for our Canucks Abroad right now with some COVID situations, injuries and of course a lot of our Canadians over there being on a big club break with their respective clubs. So it's gonna be a little bit interesting this week, but hopefully you guys are excited nonetheless. And if you are, be sure to drop a like on today's video, drop a sub as well, and let's get into the update now. All right, guys, so like we touched on, a lot of situations are going on with our Canucks abroad. COVID cases are spiking up, there's injuries, and there's some big breaks. Switzerland, Belgium, Russia, a lot of these leagues are on a huge, huge month break. So there's going to be some new players that are going to get brought into today's episode. So hopefully that will be a little treat for you guys as well. And we're not going to start with our top five players just because they're kind of scrambled, but we are going to start in England with a new member of our Canadian men's national team, Players Abroad. And that is Richie Larea. That's right. Richie Larea has completed a transfer from TFC to Nottingham Forest. It's a really exciting move for Richie Larea. It was a player who always wanted to go to Europe. We knew that. We knew that he was a player who was looking to potentially rumored back to go to Turkey. And that's where a lot of us thought he was going to end up. But he ended up getting a cheeky little move to the championship with Nottingham Forest, who has a history of signing Canadian players because in the past, Jimmy Brennan has played there. He played there from 1999 to 2003. And TFC allowed Larea to follow his dream, and he got sold to Nottingham Forest. They were the third player that Nottingham Forest had brought in the transfer window, so they're definitely going for a push for promotion, sitting in ninth place right now. And they reportedly paid around one million US to complete the deal. There were some awesome pictures coming up with Larea in the nice red Nottingham Forest kit. And on top of that, having the Canadian flag rocking around his back. Incredible move for Larea. I'm happy that he didn't sit complacent and become one of the most and best paid fullbacks in the league that he wanted to take that jump and get that experience. And on top of that, he wasn't able to feature in the FA Cup match against Arsenal, but Nottingham Forest getting all Canadians excited, beating Arsenal 1-0 in the FA Cup to move on to the next round. Incredible performance from them. And Richie Larea wearing number 14 will be licking his lips to get back in with the Nottingham Forest side very, very soon. With Junior Hoylet not featuring over the weekend, we're going down a league to League One where there's more transfer news. That's right, the first two stories of the day are going to come from transfers, and that is Theo Corbiano, who had a very interesting spell with Sheffield Wednesday. Disastrous start. He's finally started working his way in, playing as a left wing back, mostly right wing back, not really playing where he wants to, kind of that 1v1 winger type situation. And it looked like Wolves had enough of it. They canceled his loan with Sheffield Wednesday and then immediately loaned him right back to MK Don, still in League One. And it's a big move. It's, it's, it's a huge move. So we didn't feature over the weekend, but this is a new lease on life really for him because Corbiano made the best of a really bad situation, playing out of position, playing in and a system and just didn't really quite fit his game. I think Wolves really wanted to play as a winger and getting this move to MK Tongs is going to give him another big opportunity to get some more minutes, hopefully play more in a natural position for him and really show what he can do. I think he's very excited about the deal. It's on, it's a loan deal just until the end of the season and, and Wolverhampton definitely are keeping an eye on Corbino, making sure that he's getting the minutes that they want to see him do to hopefully one day make it in the first team. So it's a great move for Corbino. I hope you guys are excited for it as well. And now, we're still going to follow him in League One, but it's just going to be with a different team and hopefully a team that can sneak into uh, the promotion as well. Staying in League One, we're going to take a look at Daniel Jebson, who keeps hot, keeps on scoring, and you absolutely love to see it. At the weekend for Burton Alban, Daniel Jebson started the match playing 86 minutes and scoring a goal, his sixth goal of the season in 10 starts, 16 appearances as Burton drew 1-1. It was a nice little finish. It was a, it was a drilled cross from the right-hand side. It found Jebson, who just kind of snapshotted it. Wasn't wasn't the prettiest goal you're ever going to see Daniel Jepsen score as it kind of looked like the keeper should have got it. But regardless, he found a way to put the ball in the back of the net to keep his scoring form going. And with that result, decent little performance from Jepsen. Burton sit with a 9-5-10 and 10 record, 12th in the table. They're, they're probably not going to be going for a promotion, but it's obviously a good club for Jepsen right now. He keeps the scoring going and it's really good to see as hopefully one day, hopefully soon, he'll be able to get that call up to the Canadian national team and hopefully play because the scoring streak in this kid is definitely there. All right, guys, so the next player is still in England making his debut on our Canadian men's national team abroad update is Marcelo Flores, that player that you guys are all familiar about. I just haven't touched on him too much because 
I personally think that he's leaning a little bit more towards Mexico, but you never know. I want to bring him up to you guys' attention right now. So let's talk about Marcelo Flores and his performance over the weekend as he added another full 90 minutes to his uh, little resume over the weekend for the Arsenal Academy going the distance as Arsenal U18s drew against Tottenham U18s 1-1. Marcel Flores is getting those minutes. It's going to be very important to his development. Obviously, being a part of that Arsenal system is going to be huge. It's a player who you should be excited about, whether you're a Mexican fan or Canadian fan, because this kid is the real deal. It's just we don't know where it's going to land. And I, I, like I said, had a feeling he's probably going to end up in Mexico, but I'm hoping that Canada, with the development of what this national team is doing, of course, going to World Cup guaranteed in 2026, potentially going to the one in 2022. You never know. So that was a little update on Marcel Flores. We'll try to include him as much as we can in these updates, but a good little weekend with him getting a full 90 over the week. All right, guys, time for a quick little pit stop in Germany to take a look at Alfonso Davies, who did not feature over the weekend. Alfonso Davies did pick up COVID as did many other players for Bayern and it wasn't good timing for Bayern as once again they slip up against Gladbach. They have now drew Gladbach at the season opener for them, lost to them in season and of course losing to them big time in the poke hall. So it wasn't unexpected that they were going to lose considering the COVID outbreak but definitely missed Davies in that match and Scott Kennedy was able to feature in some friendly exhibition matches as well seeing him hopefully get back healthy something we're all looking forward to before he kicks back start in the Bundesliga 2 next weekend. Once again, we're going to do a little pit stop in France as well as very similar type of situations as Jonathan David had COVID as well as we knew, but the match that Lille was supposed to play was also postponed, so there's no real big update there on David, but I am introducing another player into our Canadian National Team Abroad episodes, and that is Justin Smith from Nice. He did not feature over the weekend, but he was a part of the match day squad. He was on the bench as Nice picked up a big 3-0 win. It was an impressive win considering they went down to 10 men and still were able to find a way to win 3-0, so... He's a, he's a player who's eligible for both France and Canada, and he'd be a very useful player to pick up on the back end for the Canadian men's national team. So we will start integrating him into our content a little bit more, hopefully seeing him get some more minutes for Nice. Heading on over to the Netherlands now, we're going to take a look at Brim once again, who was playing out on the right wing position. It was a position that he's been really dominating this year, even though the heat map kind of was showing him playing as almost that outside right attacking mid in a 3-4-2-1 system but regardless he had a pretty good showing as well as Eindhoven drew nil nil against a promotion chasing side to go 9-5-7 and seven and still 8th in the table in that last promotion spot little touches on the ball he had about 33 touches on the ball a couple long balls had a shot where he hit the woodwork he was 3 out of 5 successful dribbles he won 8 out of 11 duels and it was just a very busy man throughout that match. Impressive little performance for Bremen. And hopefully, this will continue to help Eindhoven go for the, those promotion places. Heading on over to Belgium now. We're taking a look at Tejon Buchanan, a new official member of our Canadian national team players abroad. And he wasn't able to feature in a competitive match, but he was able to feature in back-to-back exhibition matches and was able to start as we talked about Club Rouge's manager moving on to Monaco and Tejan Buchanan coming in as a fresh face just like everybody else under new management and it's good to see him get two starts back to back in the first exhibition match he went 45 minutes and then the second one he went 74 minutes looking very dangerous very Tejan Buchanan like come on very direct he, he loves taking players on 1v1 having and creating chances they drew the first match nil nil and won the second one one nothing so exciting stuff for Tejan there and can't wait to watch him play in his first competitive match for Club Bruges all right guys next we're going to bypass through Greece because unfortunately Derek Cornelius and his side had their match postponed but we're going to pit stop now in over on Portugal, a very familiar territory for us. And we're going to take a look at Stefan Ustakio, whose side, Passos de Ferreira, was taken on Benfica. It was it was an interesting match. It was an unfortunate match, unfortunately, for Passos, as Ustakio did start and played 83 minutes in that match as a CDM in a 4-2-3-1 as Passos lost 2-0 to Benfica. But in that match, they went down to 10 men right at the end of the first half. And it was nil-nil at the time, which is really unfortunate. They were, they were doing... A, pretty decent job against obviously a very tough Benfica side but once they went down to 10 men that was the outcome of the match pretty much decided as they came back and found a way to win 2 nothing. and with that loss they now sit 11th in the table with a 4-5-8 and eight record but just some tidbit of information on Steph and this is not a rumor but just you know taking a look at, at Porto who he's been continually being linked with Sergio Oliveira is looking like he's going to be going on over to Roma. So that potentially could open up some interest for Porto's management to take a look at a center mid. Steph naturally thriving in 
and Portugal could be an option who's looked at before. So I just wanted to throw that in there and see if you guys would like that obviously to happen or where you would like to see Steph go because he's still a player. I just would love to see him move because he's so, so talented and a, a move to Porto would be massive. And the fact that one of their main center midfielders could be going to Jose Marino's AS Roma side, you never know. So it was a good week regardless of the result for Steph, but they're going to have to look to bounce back and back to winning ways next weekend. Heading on over to Moriense and Steven Vittoria as he once again lined up in a 3-4-3 going all 90 minutes and rocking the captain's armband as Moriense won 1-0 over Vizela, which is an impressive win once again. They're starting to get these wins as earlier in the season, Vittoria and company weren't able to get them a lot of draws and they were really slipping towards the relegation positions and finally have carried themselves out of the relegation places into 15th place in the table with a 3 six and eight record Vittoria I've really enjoyed seeing him play in the heart of a back three I love seeing him do it for Canada and looks even better as well at club football because he just looks very comfortable very natural there and it was a good week picking up a clean sheet and a win once again to try to get away from that relegation battle all right guys sticking in Portugal we're going to take a look at a new player on our Canadian men's national team abroad list and that is Lucas Diaz a player that you guys are very very familiar with a player that I haven't touched on quite yet but wanted again to introduce him now that a lot of our Canucks playing abroad had a had a lot of you know injury situations, COVID. It was a good good way to introduce him in. And Lucas Diaz obviously is able to represent Portugal as well as Canada. Very exciting young talent playing for Sporting B side right now. And over the weekend he started and he played 72 minutes in a one nothing win over Torriense, which is a good performance from him once again. He's a really highly regarded young youngster, and if we're able to get him to commit, which a lot of our, our fans out there have been questioning me, being like, Josh, what are your thoughts on, on Lucas Diaz? And, and and again, it's kind of similar to Daniel Jebson and Marcel Flores is at a young age, being so talented, being able to represent, he's probably going to take a little bit more of his time, but it's good to see him getting these performances, getting these minutes, and hopefully one day soon again, we'll have that decision and we'll see if he ends up representing Canada or not. All right, guys, we're going to take a look at some quick fire updates for you all. The Scottish League and the Serbian League are still not playing over the weekend. The Serbian League is going to be out for quite some time. The Scottish League is coming back soon, so no updates on those players for you. And the Swiss League is still out as well, but Liam Miller did feature in an exhibition match for Basel in which, which they won 3-1. He came off the bench on the 45th minute, and it's good to see Miller at least getting some game time in and an exhibition match to try to keep him healthy leading up to the Canadian men's national team next January qualifying window. All right, guys, heading on over to Turkey now. We're going to take a look at, once again, the dynamic duo of Kyle Laren and Atiba Hutchinson as there's some silverware to take a look at, which is pretty cool. We're going to start with Kyle Laren, who midweek had a Super Cup matchup to take on. Kyle Laren did start in that match. He played 70 minutes as a left wing in a 4-3-3 system. Bit of a frustrating match. He had the odd chance here and there, but nothing to show, too much to show for it before getting subbed off. But a player who had an absolute warrior like performance is Atiba Hutchinson. He literally did it all. Anything you could have imagined Atiba pretty much doing in that game, he was able to do it. He started the match and went all 120 minutes at his age is quite impressive, playing as a center mid in a 4-3-3 system. He scored the only goal of the match. He also scored the only own goal of the match as it, the match ended 1-1 before going to a penalty shootout. And in that penalty shootout, Besiktas beat Atasvor 4-2 on pens with Atiba Hutchinson scoring the game winning penalty to win Besiktas a Super Cup, getting some silverware, a lot of celebrations, really cool moment for both Hutchinson and Laren, the Canadian duo lifting silverware once again for Besiktas, something that we're all accustomed to right now, but neither one of them featured at the weekend in the league match, but for us, you know, Canadian fans, it's cool to see some silverware being lifted right now, and hopefully again, players getting healthy, getting back, and having an eye on that January qualifying window. Sticking with Turkey, though, we have some unfortunate news on Samuel Adekubi, who was supposed to play at the weekend, but he ended up missing the match as he suffered a late injury in the final training session prior to the match. This adds to an interesting amount of Canadian men's national team injuries, and it's, it was unfortunate as he wasn't able to do that. He's been one of the best players for Hatha Sport, one of the best left backs in the league, and has really become an important player for the Canadian men's national team, giving that extra depth over on the left-hand side. So we'll have to keep an eye on that story and hope that Samuel Adekubi gets back healthy very, very soon. All right, guys, we're moving on over to the United States and taking a look at the MLS. We got some transfer rumors coming up with Sebastian Brezza, who is a member of Bologna right now, but we know the connection between Bologna and Montreal, and Brezza is actually going to return to Montreal in 2022. It's a good little move for him. He had a decent year with Montreal as he was named the MVP of the 2021 Canadian Championship, and he picked up eight starts in the MLS, so it'll be 
Interesting to see how he does, how many more minutes he's going to get under Montreal, and of course, knowing that he is eligible to represent Canada, so nice little move for Brezza once again. All right, guys, moving on over to take a look at Raheem Edwards, who played for LAFC last season, is staying in California, is staying in Los Angeles, as he is signed for the Los Angeles Galaxy, which I think is a pretty cheeky little move, if I'm being completely honest, as he was signed on a free agent, he got signed to a three-year deal that will take him to the end of 2024 MLS regular season, with an option for 2025. It's interesting to know that Edwards does hold a US green card, and he will not occupy an international slot. I think it's a solid little move for him. The Galaxy have a solid team. I think they were a little unfortunate not to make out on playoffs. And I think that he really took his game to another level under LAFC. And hopefully we'll have the chance to do that once again at Galaxy this season. All right, guys, moving on over to Jay Chapman now and looking at his potential side into Miami as they declined to sign him for the 2022 option. And with that, Jay Chapman became a free agent, is being linked to a move to Dundee FC, which I think would be a very interesting move to him to head on over to Scotland. I would definitely recommend that he do it. I think this could potentially give him an option to take his game to another level than kind of relaxing where he is right now with, with Inter Miami. And I think it's a good little move. So we'll have to wait to see that, that that transfer goes down. But I do like it and I hope that it does happen. All right, guys, for our last stop today, we're heading on over to Canada to take a look at the CPL. Alessandro Haldrapur and Taryn Campbell have signed from Pacific to Forge. It is a blockbuster CPL transfers, something that I personally did not see coming. I thought both these players potentially would have had looks to, to the MLS, and it's very interesting to see Hamilton be able to persuade them both to come over after, of course, Pacific beating Hamilton in the final last year. So I'm very interested to get a lot of you guys' opinions down below because that is as blockbuster of a transfer we've ever seen in the CPL. I'm a big fan of Taron Campbell, very curious to see how he's going to do in Forge, and he's had a very successful CPL career. So it just it's an interesting one if there wasn't already a rivalry between forge and pacific there definitely is now so guys that brings us to an end of this episode of our canadian men's national team abroad it was a fun update for you guys a lot of transfers a lot of talks some covid as well and of course some silverware from our bishik desk boys if you guys did enjoy it let us know down in the comments your thoughts on all these storylines be sure to drop a like on your way out drop a sub as well and we'll see you guys next time cheers friends